This is, I've seen a lot of Trump rallies. I've watched a lot. As you guys know, I'm the number one stand. Okay. I got the hat to prove it. And God, is this not the most insane one? I have never, this is somehow the objectively most insane Trump rally he's ever had. We're going to do the Trump rally. We're going to look at some of the highlights from the Trump rally. Yep. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Donald Trump had a rally in Madison Square Garden. Now, why is this important? One, because he's not going to win New York. Why is he doing this rally? He's trying to get a lot of media coverage surrounding the rally. And I guess in order to maximize the media coverage, he just let the racist run crazy, say crazy mm. during this rally. Now, it's not that surprising. Madison Square Garden has hosted a Nazi rally in the past, I believe in 1939. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it hasn't been 100 years yet. I just never really thought that we would get a second Nazi rally before the century turned, right? All day event at Madison Square Garden. It included speeches from a number of warm-up speakers, some that immediately drew some backlash. Robert Costa was at the rally. He's with us now in the studio. Wow, so Bob, friendly. good morning to you. It was a very long day. Like, what dude, the f*** is dude, the media? Read it. Drew yeah, some backlash no. as if it's like they said, like, uh, yeah, no, they, they were, cursed a little bit. They were, like, sig hiling pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like, what the f***? They were, the, the rally, at least, like, the highlights that I saw literally were, like, virtually, virtually sig hiling, okay? It's pretty f***ing crazy. We will have the strongest economy, the most secure borders, the safest cities, the most powerful military. Trump took the stage at a jam-packed Madison Square Garden in Manhattan and leaned into his border plan should he win the White House. I will rescue every city and town that has been invaded and conquered. I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. All as he was unleashing harsh attacks on Vice President Harris. No one respects her. No one trusts her. No one takes her seriously. Everyone knows she is a very low IQ individual. With just over a week to go until Election Day, that sentiment was echoed throughout the night by his key allies, who rallied supporters with Little speeches low IQ over dog the course there of six too. hours. Little New low York IQ dog is Trump country! <laughs> From Republican lawmakers... We're going to take this country back. ...to media personalities Ugh. like Dr. Phil Gross. and Hulk Hogan flexing their support. As well as billionaire Elon Musk. Oh! And an introduction, and Elon Musk. Okay, they would. To <laughs> Can I be clear? If he wasn't like some like Trump grifter, they would all be calling him the F slur. Oh, dude, yeah. And they probably still are secretly. Nah, but they, like, they, this, like, it doesn't matter. The, the, you can be the, <laughs> you can be the grossest, sweatiest loser as long as you say the words, as long as you say that you love trump you love daddy they will f idolize you that is the thing about right wingers in general the thing about right wingers in general is that <sighs> like they don't give a f they literally just need to hear those words okay they need to hear trump is right immigrant bad black person low iq and they'll be like all right great you're with me yeah, you're on dude, the team so bad i they, they can't this can't be good for them right are there people out there that don't find this painfully so painful i i think people i struggle to find <clears throat> words in the english language to describe like the level of ick and the level of just uh just i can't describe it because no word in the language does it really justice to what i feel when i see him and what i see him do dude this was insane like no i know the <laughs> usa like how do you fuck up a usa chant dude how how do you fuck this up usa 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 <laughs> U.S.A. 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 Yeah. How does that go? Aren't U.S.A. Cool? Look at me. I'm cool. Oh, uh, U.S.A. <laughs> everybody. Come on, everybody. It's like, dude, what the f***? So dude, cool. Dude, dude, please go on the first <laughs> one-way trip to Mars. Please. Just dude. never to return. Dude. Oh, my God, dude. Uh. I... I hate him so much. Ah, uh, dude. I don't know. Like, I, like at least Trump has like redeeming qualities in in terms of like being telegenic, like being kind of funny at yeah. times. Like Elon Musk has nothing. I don't know who I hate more. I think I hate Elon Musk more. I might hate him more. Oh, 100%. I just, he is like, 
<laughs> like it's just he is also not dissimilar to <laughs> Donald Trump, like a ginormous con man too. I'm dark maga, but also dork like, maga. You can't even laugh at him because he's such a loser. You can't laugh at him. Hassan even. jealous because Elon has more money. True. <laughs> I'm Brian Kill Me. Oh I'm Brian Kill God, Me. Dude. I'm Brian Kill Me. Ah! Ah! Dude, 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 dude. dude. I, I get it. it. I get like, you know, repping your team. Oh. I get it. I understand. That's one thing. But like supporting this degree of cringe is just like that's you need like a wellness check. Yeah. Like if you're going, oh, that was cool. Your immediate family members have to institutionalize you. This is okay. <laughs> You have to be institutionalized. If you look at this and you go, that's sick. Dude. I loved it. I loved it when he did that. I think he's the best example of what happens when somebody who's terminally online goes out in public. Yeah. Like, he, he's so he's online. Like, that yeah, this, he's like, like he a... He thinks it's... He's such like a terminally on Reddit... Yeah, he is, he is the most, like, Discord, Reddit, stalker adjacent guy that sees daylight and, and just this is how they look dude it, and act because he'll go on his twitter after these rallies and like do some like cringe reddit meme that he'll post and then it'll get promoted and put on everybody's algorithm because he owns the f platform Ugh. if he wasn't rich he'd literally be arrested from his basement for posting threats on 4chan yeah no actually it's it's so it's so f lame dude it's so bad oh my god this is what he posted this is what he posted yeah, I yeah. Saw that. oh my god four hundred thirty-one thousand likes oh my god dude no institutionalized dude dude we need re-education camps like i'm just saying it yeah, again yeah. and again and again and and people always think like oh hassan you commie bastard be, like hassan you commie bastard like when you say re-education camps like well you mean like you know gulags or whatever and it's like no, I don't mean like gulags, okay? But we do need like, we need to open the schools and we need to force people to go back to school, okay? No more homeschooling. You have to go to like real school, okay? You can't do fake school. This is unacceptable. This is completely unacceptable. If you think this shit is cool, you have to be reintegrated in a normal society. Like you are not living on the same plane of existence as the rest of us, dude. I swear to God. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Ooh. Less than two hours. What's so funny to me is how, like, your racist joke flops in front of racists. Like, an entire group of people who love racist jokes, who eat that shit alive, and it flopped. How do you do that? How do, I don't understand how you do that. And like the reaction to this was like, oh, liberals don't like humor. And I'll be honest, like I get frustrated because I like comedy. I like offensive comedy. I like like dark humor, right? And one of the most frustrating things is like people will like say like, oh, you're just sensitive. No, mother, it's not a good joke. Okay. It just wasn't funny. Like it's not creative. It's just racist the thing is as someone who is also a comedy enjoyer myself yeah and does not mind like uh, edgy humor i myself participate in edgy humor and i get quote unquote canceled for it all the goddamn time uh by republicans who get very upset all of a sudden and someone who has had a ton of comedians who also uh participate in edgy humor on his broadcast the thing that really frustrates me is that as someone who is not a comedian who could never be a comedian i still have like in a very nerdy way followed the process of comedy like how you make a joke how you structure a joke and how you write your material how you test out your material and the issue is that kind of humor is super bottom of the barrel like it's hack. It's hack material. It is what you do when you're not clever enough to make, like, yes. when you're not clever enough to construct, like, an intelligent joke. Yes. That's the problem. And this is what was frustrating when, like, Chappelle was, like, getting criticized, or, like, when Chappelle was, like, going through, like, and he just, like, wouldn't stop making terrible jokes about the LGBTQ community. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the LGBTQ community, okay? I love a good gay joke, okay? Yeah, I'm, we, I'm I've, down with yeah, it. We, I, we, we make gay jokes all yeah, the time. Yeah, we make homophobic like gay jokes joke. all the f time. I love a good f gay joke. What was frustrating about me, uh, like, with Chappelle, is, like, somebody who I regard as, like, one of the greatest comedians of all time, yeah. is I was like, he's so much better than that. Yeah. They just don't, they weren't good. Yeah, that's being, what was annoying is I, I'm not like, and I hated it, it being framed as like, oh, you're just insensitive. No mother 
No, make you're too. Yeah, joke. they were like, no, you're too sensitive. Make you're too sensitive. Joke, it's like, no, dude. That's it. Like, if you at any point, if you are a generational talent in the field of comedy and you are repeating 4chan Steven Crowder jokes, like attack helicopter jokes and sh in like 2022, what the f are you doing? Like, that's insane. And then this last additional detail just came about it. This guy's speech last night, they were saying they didn't vet the speech, so they didn't know his joke was there. Surprise, it was vetted. They removed him calling Harris a cunt, but left the Puerto Rico joke in. So they were okay with it last night. The shock comic who opened for Trump. I like that they're calling Tony Hinchcliffe a shock comic. Tony Hinchcliffe is not, he's never really been that funny. As someone who used to listen to Kill Tony a lot way back in the day, as someone who was a massive Joe Rogan fan way back in the day before he had like Milo Yiannopoulos and every like neo-Nazi YouTuber on his broadcast. I used to be a fan of Joe Rogan. I have his mug as you guys know like that's that's the degree of fandom i had for joe rogan i had his literal f mug he was very influential for me you know as a independent media figure in some ways that part still remains to a certain degree like i was i was a fan of his i would listen to kill tony as well never really liked kill tony as much but like when you like joe rogan you like kill tony you like all of the people in his orbit, right? And I'm talking, this is like 2014, 2015, 2016, okay? For me, as someone who used to listen to Tony Hinchcliffe all the time and listen to Kill Tony all the time, he just basically surrounds himself with funnier comedians usually. And that's the only reason why that actually hits. That's his method. His method is be in Joe Rogan's orbit early on and then be able to get like funnier comics to actually rip apart someone's uh, stand-up material before they've ever actually tested it out. That's it. That was the thing that Tony Hinchcliffe brought to the table. He has never been funny personally. He's never been that funny. Shock comedy is like, you can, but you can do it if like you structure the joke in a way, and I'm not a comedian either, but like, no, I mean, there's a way to do it. Yeah, I, the thing about shock comedy is that like shock comedy is usually very hack unless you do it really well. And there's not a lot of people that do it really well. You have like Anthony Jeselnik, you have Daniel Tosh maybe to a certain degree. But like beyond that, it's not very like Norm obviously was uh, was Norm McDonald was good at it. But like most of the greats in terms of shock comedy are like Andrew Dice Clay and Andrew Dice Clay overall not very good like he's not I, I and I think that's what the problem is uh is that like people remember them as like comedy greats but if you actually look at their material it's like eh like it's it's kind of hack and the the actual comedy greats like George Carlin have actually directly called that out as a matter of fact I would defend to the death his right to do everything he does the thing that I, that I find unusual and it's you know it's not a criticism so much but his targets are underdogs and comedy traditionally has picked on people in power, people who abuse their power. Uh, women and gays and immigrants are kind of, to my way of thinking, underdogs. And, um, you know, he ought to be careful because he's Jewish. And a lot of the people who want to pick on these kind of groups, the Jews are on that list a little further. You got women, gays, gypsies, blah, 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 blah. And then suddenly you find Jews. And, and Andrew, suddenly Andrew's arrested. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, obviously he should do what he wants. And uh, why does he get away with it, do you think, then? Well, because we have never laughed at jokes about the Well, poor. he's appealing. I think he's appealing largely. I think his core audience are young white males who are threatened by these groups. I think a lot of these guys aren't sure they're manhood because that's a problem when you're going in through adolescence. I think he's talking about uh, Andrew Dice Clay here, actually. If I'm not mistaken, he's talking about Andrew Dice Clay, right? You know, am I really? Am I, could I be? I hope I'm not one of them. And the women who assert themselves and are competent are a threat to these men. And so are immigrants in terms of jobs and... and uh, and, and so that's why we as an audience then will laugh. I, you say we, I don't think you're I mean, either, I don't know. But I, I mean, think you're collective that, we. I think that's what, what is at the core of that experience that takes place in these arenas. Is a certain, uh, a, you know, a, a sharing of, of uh, anger and rage at, 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 these, at these targets. And I'm sure Andrew isn't that angry at them. I'm sure he's playing it as a comic. I've said this time and time again, okay? It's the Hannah Gadsby effect. A lot of comedians basically do Hannah Gadsby, but on the opposite side of the political spectrum, where they're not doing comedy, they're not looking for laughter, they're looking for applause. And the moment that you stop looking for laughter and you start chasing applause breaks, you're basically doing a f TED Talk. You're not doing stand-up, you're doing a God TED Talk, okay? And that is, in my opinion, comedy f poison. I that's why I despise Bill Maher and love Bill Burr.
right? Bill, Bill Maher does it all the time, every night, every time he, he goes on a show, he does the exact same shit. Jezel Nick on Shock Comics. All these comics now, it's like almost the point is to get in trouble. It's like, why are you giving me I'm, I'm a comic, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. That's wrong, as far as I'm concerned. Art. Oh, wait, is, say it again so I don't miss it. People think like, oh, as a comic, your job <laughs> is to get in trouble. And so, if, but they don't want to get yelled at. It's like, it's okay to make people mad, but they don't want any pushback. And I think that's wrong. Oh. As a comedian, you want to make people laugh. Andy, this is a quote attributed to Andy Warhol that I love. It's just, art is getting away with it. You know, if you put out a special and everyone's pissed, like you didn't get away with it. You know, you need to make everyone laugh that they're like, yeah, he talked about some fucked up stuff, but we're all That's happy. actually brilliant. Mm. That's art. Yeah, it's true. Oh, it's and like, it's hack. It's hack. Yeah. And and the funniest thing is, or the craziest thing is, I like, I, I think that is the hardest type of joke to make work, which is why I think like Nick Mullins, some of his best material is directly in that realm. He has the capacity to make some of the most like unacceptable, inappropriate things work because he's very f funny. A lot of these guys, on the other hand, can't do that. Mark Marin put out a whole statement, my woke king. He wrote, the anti-woke flank of the new fascism is being driven almost exclusively by comics, my peers. Whether or not they are self-serving or true believers of new fascism is unimportant. They are the movement. Whether they see themselves as acolytes or just comics doesn't matter. Whether they are driven by the idea that what they are fighting for a free speech issue or whether they are truly morally bankrupt racist doesn't matter. They are part of the public face of a fascist political movement that seeks to destroy the democratic idea. When comedians with podcasts have shameless self-proclaimed white supremacists and fascists on their show to joke around like they are just entertainers or even just politicians, all it does is humanize and normalize fascism. When someone uses their platform for that reason, they are facilitating anti-American sentiment and promoting violent autocracy. It's a good take. You won't be surprised to find out there's Tony bits about Palestine Israel that's just as bad. Palestine, we're oh, all yeah. thinking the same thing. Settle your stuff already. Best out of three. Rock, paper, scissors. You know the Palestinians are gonna throw rock every time. But you also know the Jews have a hard time throwing that paper. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, brother. Go back. Go back to the writing room, dude. Tony's other racist joke. Heck yeah. It's a cool black guy with a thing on his head. What the hell is that? A lampshade? Look at this guy. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm just kidding. That's one of my buddies. He had a Halloween party last night. We had fun. We carved watermelons together. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, brother, this stinks. Oh, black guy, watermelon. Oh, Wait. this is sick, man. You're really, you're really reaching. Dude. You're really, you're really opening up new avenues with this. Joke. Didn't the Trump administration come out and distance themselves? I don't is, know. I'm yeah, sure they I, might. They, I think they came out. Didn't or did I? Was that like a, a fake tweet or something? Didn't they come out with a statement saying that they were like it doesn't represent the views of the Trump administration or something? Uh, yeah, like that? they also tried to say that it wasn't vetted at first, and then it came out that it definitely was vetted. <laughs> it's wild that Donald Trump is objectively funnier than the comics that he has on, which is crazy. Like Donald Trump knows not to say those things. You know what I mean? He, he, Donald Trump is a massive racist, okay? And even he's like, watermelon jokes, that's a little, that's a bit too far, don't it's you think, Tony? Sad. Don't do that very one. Sad. Trump would have comics that are less funny than him. He's such, that's such a demo. Oh my God, you're right. He was, he was doing diva sh he was like, I don't want an opener to outflank me. He would be funnier. <laughs> I don't want so someone, <laughs> I don't want someone opening for me to be funnier. I don't want it. <laughs> I was saying before you got in here how like insane it is to tank that style of joke in front of an audience like that. Yeah, you got the most racist Debras yeah, you, and Hanks from Long Island. It. Like you got the thin blue line crowd, okay? Everyone's looking like a bag of potatoes out there in the crowd they're like yeah <laughs> they're still <they're laughs> ready and for even it. they're not like oh man that wasn't that funny i've, yeah. I've heard way funnier racist jokes <laughs> <laughs> later puerto rican superstar bad bunny reshared a video from vice president harris's campaign posted earlier in the day to his nearly 46 see this is a funny this is an example of a 
funny joke that's kind of racist. <laughs> Puerto Rico's trash, spreads crazy rumors about Haitians, can't accept the skin color, green card marriage, is Trump our first Dominican president? It, that's like, see, there you go. You can make it work, okay? <laughs> you can make it work. See, if that, if Tony Hinchcliffe said that, people would like that. People would, actually, maybe that crowd would be like, I don't understand. I've never met a Dominican. I, mean, I, I didn't get the I joke. Don't... And I didn't, so... <laughs> I okay. didn't get it, and okay. I okay. That was that was a it's that a was a too highbrow for me. Yeah. See. Okay. Well. Uh, see, I would. I've been that. That was. A, that is like, a good uh, joke. That is actually a good okay. joke. All right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like this. The what is welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms, and by open arms, I mean like this. It's wild. Boo, this guy stinks. Wild. What's more Latinos embarrassing is the tweet that what the guy said in the tweet. Did you see what he said in the tweet? Oh yeah, no, he's joking. He's saying uh, the right is starting to get better at comedy and is making the lefties nervous. That's a that's a meme from like way back in the day. I think it was Paul Joseph Watson who first said that. Oh. Uh, they love making babies too. Just know that. What? <laughs> it's wild. And these Latinos, they love making babies too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no pulling out they don't do that they come inside just like they did to our country dude this is really <laughs> bad man like this is really bad like i don't know how I, this would bomb it like a small comedy club like okay in, i'm i'm uh, uh, okay are you really ready bad. five head take five head take five head yeah. take joe rogan secretly in a tank for kamala harris <laughs> does this interview <laughs> Does this interview with Donald Trump uh, specifically to get Donald Trump to have Tony Hinchcliffe as his opener? Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe bombs so f hard. That is the real October surprise. That is the real third assassination attempt. That is actually assassinating the Trump campaign with this, with these bits. Because there's no okay. way Trump looks at this and finds this funny. He's probably pissed. This is so bad. He's probably this pissed, is, right? This is like, I cannot look at this as anything but deliberate sabotage you cannot view this in any other framework dude this has to be deliberate sabotage because holy moly this sucks dude ah conservative i mean uh, latinos love to come they never pull out unlike i mean or just like they came into our country oh my god that's so bad that's so f bad dude and he wrote it <laughs> That's what's crazy. He wrote it. I don't think that was improvised. He's reading off of a, something he wrote. This is, this is so bad, brother. Republicans are the party with a good sense of humor. <laughs> oh, come on. Ah! Ah! It's crazy. I'm losing it. It's so bad. Dude, he has, he has like Elon Musk level stage presence there. It's awesome. What happened here? So... Before I create this piece of art, I would just like to give the art world a little something. I got it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Bam! What the f*** is this guy? Who the hell is he? What is this guy? Okay, I need to see more. I need to watch the whole rally, dude. I think this rally is just like wall-to-wall -wall fantastic. <laughs> Bam! How you doing? F*** you. I'm the painter. <laughs> You. Yeah, much like Adolf Hitler, all right? <laughs> yeah, me and him, we went both. We did paintings. Say enough, no more. America gets its future back. And what? And he is like actively one of the biggest Nazis in the Trump uh, in the Trump administration or was like he you remember child deterrence or, or child separation is a deterrence policy like kids in cages. Yes. Yeah, he, yeah. he wrote that oh. like that was his plan. Real stand-up guy, yeah. huh? Yeah, he uh he's a straight up white supremacist, oh, like oh, Jesus Christ. Let's see what he uh let's see what kind of cool things he had to say. After libel, lawsuit after lawsuit. They tried to jail him, they tried to bankrupt him, they tried to imprison him, and they even tried to take his life with not one but two assassination attempts. Oh, and let me on. after libel. They're really stretching on the second one. <laughs> They're really stretching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the really second stretching. one doesn't count, bro. Come on. Yeah. The cartels are gone. The criminal migrants are gone. The gangs are gone. America is for Americans and Americans only. One man. And that man, ladies and gentlemen, that man took a bullet for you. He took a bullet for democracy. Like, he didn't even take a bullet. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> like, you you can't you can't claim he took a bullet dude if 
barely grazed his ear. Like, get the f out of here. <laughs> oh, Grant Cardone is f***ing insane. He apparently has some violent... What was the line that he said you showed me? Uh, where I was like, what the f***? Why is Grant Cardone went nutty mode. I didn't even know he, he had that dog in him. Like, I know he's like a right wing guy, but I, and his wife is like doing a super pack for Donald Trump, but I had no idea that he was like this insane. He says he had some of the hottest takes uh, on the, on the podium. No, this is in complete gone. Complete not gone. even, not even her simp Mark Cuban can sell this. Even Marky Boy says this would destroy the global economy and take the USA down with it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kamala Harris is the least qualified candidate to ever run for any political office in American history. She makes, she makes her boss look competent. She's a fake. I'm not here to invalidate her. She's a fake, a fraud. She's a pretender. Her and her pimp handlers will destroy our country. Oh my God. That's I think crazy. I think people. That is crazy. I think people should be scared to say stuff like this. That like, is am I, insane. is that controversial? Like, no, I, I, it's like not. and I don't mean like, like physical violence or whatever. I'm not saying that at all, but like you should be, if you're not going to be embarrassed by statements like this, you should at least be like afraid that people are going to look at you and be like, oh, you're like a massive well, racist. People, people have been spending so much time on Twitter and in their algorithm that they think that you can go out and say stuff like this. Like, what the f*** is going on, man? What What is happening? Like, they think that there there's so many like-minded people around them that they feel like everybody feels this way, but it's they're like... They're in a fake place. Twitter isn't a real place. I know, but like... Most people would listen to that and be like, holy fuck, that's crazy. There's more. He, this is where he says the slaughter thing. They've already crippled the dollar, manufactured inflation, imported a virus, censored your voices, funded transgender surgeries, and made empty promises to the middle class for 50 years. This election, this election has to be more than a victory. It needs to be a landslide. Uh, we need to slaughter this other people. We need to bring a hundred million votes to Donald Trump. What the f Oh, I can't wait till these cocksuckers lose. <laughs> I mean, this is a Nazi rally, dude. This is straight up. Here is uh, Rudy Rudolph Giuliani, America's mayor. He had some f bars too. He's starting to look like an animated old guy. Like if you were to animate yeah, an old I guy. Love, I love his little guy. tie that he's wearing. He's probably... <laughs> shilling some coffee too <laughs> like come on buy my coffee <laughs> at rudolphgiuliani.com come on i'm bankrupt i had to sell my condominium <laughs> my new york penthouse i had to sell it hamas is not there for us iran is not there for us they want you know what's crazy about these guys that are like so <laughs> unconditionally pro-israel they also are like unimaginably anti-Semitic. Remember when he, remember Rudolph Giuliani? He was like, he said a whole bunch of shit about Jewish people. Let me see. Let me see if I can find some of his choice words. Okay. Yeah. Giuliani maligns Jews and women in transcript filed in harassment case. Jesus Christ. He had like a really funny line about the Red Sea. I love that one. That was actually kind of funny. Transcript cut out there. It was not clear whether Giuliani elaborated. In another portion, he engaged in a derisive discussion of the size of Jewish men's genitals. Mr. Kelton wrote in a paper, uh, wrote in a filing accompanying the transcripts that uh, they were replete with provably false assertions. Jews, he says, they want to go through that freaking Passover all the time. Man, oh man, get over the Passover. It was like 3,000 years ago. Okay, the Red Sea parted. Big deal. Not the first time that happened. That is the funniest thing to say about Moses. <laughs> first of all, not only does this assume Moses did actually part the Red Sea, okay? Like, like physically, he did that. That was a real thing that occurred. But also that it is actually something that is something that has happened multiple times. You can't write that. That's funnier than anything Tony Hinchcliffe has ever said in his entire life. Okay. Oh, big deal. <laughs> it's happened multiple times. It's so commonplace. Didn't he say something about Italian dicks versus Jewish dicks? Yeah, he did. Uh, he said that Jewish men have small penises, but Italian men have big penises or something like that too. Hamas is not there for us. Iran is not there for us. They want to kill us. And the Palestinians are taught to kill us at two years old. They will. <laughs> like it's... 
it's it's so insane that he's saying this when you remove the context of it you're like wow that's an unimaginably racist thing to say but it's <laughs> It, you want it's yeah. also funny <laughs> like the oh, idea yeah, right. the idea that a group of individuals like palestinians are taught to kill americans at the age of two is such a funny f line i'm sorry no fries, i can't take it oh, seriously yeah. they're learning to kill americans at two years old <laughs> what the f won't let a palestinian in jordan they won't let a palestinian in egypt and harris <laughs> That's also ridiculous. Half of the Jordanian population is, is Palestinian. Just wants to bring them to you. They may have good people. I'm sorry I don't take a risk with people that are taught to kill Americans at two. I'm on the side of Israel. Why is he so like beholden to that line that they like who told him this? Did he not think about this? Like, has he not had a two year old child at a certain point? Like he has children. He knows what a two year old does. Two year olds are like pissing in their pants and sh like, what do you mean? Like, why two? Why didn't he just say like, oh, they learn to hate America by by the time they become teenagers or some sh like why why specifically to because he repeats it again because he's like eh, specifically at the age of two palestinians learn to hate america you're on the side of israel donald trump's on the side of israel and they're on the side of the terrorists yeah america first by the way <laughs> oh this one was crazy too this guy's out of his mind we'll we'll get to that in a second hold on hold on uh we did the slaughter one now they're trying to kill him they called kamala harris the antichrist the devil contrast between yeah. harris uh event in philadelphia byron donalds comes out to byron donalds comes out to john cena music mike johnson tell lies that the democrats are full-on marxism this is not your father's democratic party they are now full-on to marxism and socialism they don't envision for us to save the founding principles and the greatest nation Doesn't in the history of the world. Doesn't this guy monitor his instead, son's porn usage? Yeah, he does. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the normal guy, by oh, the way. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, what I thought. that's the funniest part about this is like that the, the Mike Johnson is supposed to be like the, the buttoned up guy. Yeah. He He's is the, the guy, up guy. Yeah, buttoned up. They uh, monitor each other's porn yeah, usage. Yeah, his son monitors what, his porn usage yeah, as well. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, cool. What a cool fucking stuff. weirdo. He exudes this like very weird energy. I feel like he's the type of dude who like if he finds himself like around a woman that's not his wife that he like even remotely thinks is attractive he goes back home and just like whips himself like at the end of the day he's like oh well, it's time for my punishment <laughs> like i don't know why i'm almost certain of it i i like it's just that is exactly the vibes that he puts out he probably calls it yeah he probably calls her to tell her too yeah that he found somebody else attractive you know <laughs> you know he just he is definitely a self self flagellator yes <laughs> what they envision for us is that we would be some sort of european style marxist borderless utopia we all know that's a dangerous fool's errand Different european style yeah, european yeah yeah it would be really bad if we got health care <laughs> If you've been to Europe, it's a wasteland. Yeah, it's it's always it's on fire. Bro gives me Ned Flanders, but uh, Nazi vibes, yes. By the way, we didn't choose the name for that by random. Merit Street Media. This country was built on hard work, added slavery, yeah. <laughs> indigenous genocide, <laughs> and a whole bunch of racist anti-immigration <laughs> sentiment after we used and abused other groups and migrants as well. Value and talent, not on equal outcome, not on DEI. This country was built on hard work. Well, By the way, you skipped a few places there. Dr. Phil. Phil got a job from Oprah and he's against DEI. Yeah, dude, this is, you know, don't remind me. Okay. <laughs> that is, you know, <laughs> Oprah unleashed this demon upon us. Okay. I will never forgive her for that. Nor will I forget. Watch Dr. Phil. When I came home from school, this country was built on hard work and merit. That's why I love Donald Trump who worked very hard, <laughs> bankrupt six of his businesses and got hundreds of millions of dollars from his daddy. Oh, so this was an insane one. Howard Lutnick, CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald and co-chair of Trump's transition team at MSG Rally. The first thing, we must elect Donald J. Trump president because we must crush jihad. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> it's, it's nuts, it's nuts.
<laughs> it, it's it. I don't know what year it is, but uh, for them, it's it's two thousand one. Yeah, literally. Yeah, it's it's November of left. It is November of two thousand one yeah, right literally. now. It's not no. It's not November of twenty twenty four. Jesus Christ. We must crush jihad. <laughs> we got more from the rally. There was the the other. I think this was the same guy. He had some insane things that he said like where is that the guy that called it a nazi rally like directly he was like i just got back what the f is this bro <laughs> dude every moment every frame of painting every frame of painting dude every <laughs> moment of this f rally is insane media out there who won't show my story or won't back donald trump i love you donald god bless america and God bless the United States of America. Wait, God bless America and God bless the, the United, United States, States of, America. of America. Dude, he's f nuts, dude. Oh, this was, yeah. I want to see the full one, though. I don't want to see video. just this part. So, oh, here, radio host Sid Rosenberg, who called Doug Emhoff a crappy Jew at Trump's MSG rally. I just got back from Israel about two weeks ago. They love Trump and Israel, just so you know, they love him. They love him and Bibi. They love them both. Oh, what about that? I'm in Israel and... No, they do love Trump. They love Trump more than they like Bibi. Yeah, well, they don't like Bibi, though, from what I understand, right? His approval rating is pretty well, low, Well, they like him a lot more now. Oh, really? Yeah, they were... Yeah, since, the, since he started doing bombing campaigns in Gaza and in Lebanon, like, a lot of people have uh, warmed up to him again. Oh, Jesus. I had the opportunity to break the Yom Kippur fast with Bibi Netanyahu cried with Israelis in the streets. They listen to me from Jerusalem. They really do this. Like, all of you listen to me, all of you. I get back and they go, Sid, you want to speak at this MSG thing? I go, sure. Out of character for me to speak at a Nazi rally. I was just in Israel, but I took... That's crazy. That's a crazy thing to say. He just like openly is like, I'm at a Nazi rally, but hey... We've done crazier things, you know? That's hey, crazy. how you doing? Did anybody <laughs> laugh? I want to hear what the... The gig! They didn't even laugh. Back, back and they go sit because he's just stating a fact. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's a it's a Nazi rally. Yeah. You want to speak at this MSG thing? I go, sure. <coughs> Out of character for me to speak at a Nazi rally. I was just in Israel, but I took the gig. She is some sick bastard, that Hillary Clinton, huh? What a sick son of a bitch. The whole. <laughs> Party, a bunch of degenerates. Oh my god. Low lives, Jew haters, and low lives. Oh my god. Every one of them. Every one of what them. The <laughs> Look at my city. Look at my city. Yes, this building is beautiful. You're all beautiful. Look at you. Uh. Are they? Are they? Oof. Maybe you can't see from up there. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think he's joking about it. Yes, I know he's joking about it. Megaphonics, thank you for describing the joke. Yes, I know he's joking about it. I don't think he legitimately thinks he's at a Nazi rally. I know. I was also joking about his joke. Yes, he is implying that liberals call it a Nazi rally. I did not think that this man is literally like, I just got back from Israel and now I'm at a Nazi rally. This is, I've seen a lot of Trump rallies. I've watched a lot. As you guys know, I'm the number one stand. Okay, I got the hat to prove it. And God, is this not the most insane one? I have never, this is somehow the objectively most insane Trump rally he's ever had. And it's really interesting because it proves my point that I repeat all the time. There is nothing more nutty than a right-wing Republican in a blue enclave, okay? Like in a blue state. They are straight piping Nazi ideology. Like these guys are unironically more insane than conservatives in Texas, more insane than conservatives in our Kansas. They are the backbone. They are the most likely to be the brown shirts. They'll never do it, but you know, because they're too fat and lazy, but they are the guys. They are the ones who are like primed ideologically. But you can't walk outside past about 10 o'clock at night here. If you're a pretty woman, like my beautiful wife, Danielle out there somewhere, you get punched across the face. Oh, Just for on. walking down the street. Look, <laughs> who did? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Can I say yeah. something? Yeah, people are. There's a there's something? a there's an epidemic of, of face punching. I am the most like skittish person when it comes to walking in cities. You know this. Yes. Tell I've... tell them. 
I, I've talked about it quite frequently. Yeah, how Austin, skittish I am. Austin is. I was actually, I was actually talking to him about this as well earlier this morning. I was telling him uh, about how, like, so you showed me. You no, no, you. The conversation that we had when we, like, when we heard firecrackers outside, and then you heard like cop cars and. Sh yeah. And your freak out moment made me understand that no matter how progressive someone is, okay, and you're a very progressive guy, yeah. if you live in the suburbs, okay, if you live in the suburbs, you have no idea what it's like to live in a city. Yeah. And you literally freak the fuck out over like normal city. Sh this man <laughs> heard firecrackers and then heard like first responders like passing by. He heard like sirens. It was a cop siren. And he freaked the f out. He was like, oh my God, I got to get on my like next door app or whatever well, citizen I, app I, I to see what the f is going on. I and it's like, I've grown up in such privilege that I don't even know what a gunshot sounds like. But also, <laughs> like, <laughs> but also, I, I was trying to explain to him, like, dude, we like, I live in a city. Yeah. Like, this is <laughs> the most normal thing. Like, it, yeah. there is not, like, this is not unique at all. Like, hearing police uh, sirens is the most normal thing. You so, hear it a thousand times so, a day. So, my point is but what Hassan says is the ridiculousness of what this guy said. I went to New York City, and I was walking around smoking a joint in, like, at nighttime, like, just freely walking around on the streets. New York City at night is a beautiful place to walk around. Yeah, dude, granted, it's not... Granted, like, like, I don't think you should walk alone anywhere, right? No matter what. No, you're fine. It, you're okay. fine everywhere. Right, see, maybe that's my suburban side coming out you're a little bit. You're fine everywhere, but especially like, in cities. <laughs> you're surrounded by other people. I think you should be safe, and I think you should walk in pairs. I think that's a good thing to do. I think you should definitely... Yeah, like, I don't, I don't think that's... It's, a, it's fine everywhere. If you're around a ton of people even if you are alone you, you are safe practice. yeah this is something that i cannot explain to people who have like you know spent their entire lives <laughs> in like suburban enclaves mm -hmm. that like no there is safety being around other people okay and it's not like a like a man moment like i understand why women are uncomfortable walking around alone whether it is at night or any other time during the day but my point is when you live in a city and there are plenty of women who live in cities in this audience that will reiterate this as well there is safety in numbers people don't understand that because uh that is like super normal place like super normal in cities if it were to happen in the suburb you'd be like what the f is going on this is, this is scary stuff if you hear a cop if you hear sirens in your suburbs <laughs> yes. you're probably gonna be like oh my gosh something no, crazy I, is happening. i understand my position comes with a lot of privilege i am white passing okay <laughs> you're white man just say <laughs> you're white I'm, I'm just kidding i'm look i'm lebanese but i'm obviously white okay it's very clear Okay. Stop trying to flex in front of your uh, in front of Los Angeles Times. I just want them to know I'm Lebanese. Okay. <laughs> yeah. it, it, there is like if you've ever if you've grown up in cities, if you ever lived in a city, then you know that there is uh, a, a level of safety provided to you by being around other people. Okay, that's it. And most people don't recognize that, and they mistake like a lot of the other things that happen when you live around a fuck ton of people, like the increased presence of crime, for example, and they mistake that for like bedlam. Hassan is Rudy's best moment. There's no place in America the president shouldn't be able to come. What? Shouldn't be able to come? <laughs> That's weird. Okay. Now I know why he ran for president. Yeah, he wanted to come everywhere in America. He's going for the he's going for the gooner vote, dude. Hi, yeah, yeah. What is happening in the world, dude? Tucker Carlson has some choice moments as well. Play these clips. I got There's not one oh, moment shit. I've ever been with him off camera where he's spending his time grousing about people he hates. Ever. He's what? talking about the people and the country he loves in his private time. Wait, we all see him in his private time. He's tweeting about people that he hates. What are you, what are you talking about? Trust me. And people know. Oh, yeah, Tucker, we're going to trust that's you. Been taken over Isn't this the same guy that came out with a story about how Obama was gay and interviewed the guy that allegedly had sex with him? <laughs> oh, come the f*** on. Trust you? Give me a break. ...by a leadership class that actually despises them and their values and their history and their culture and their customs really hates them to the point that it's trying to replace them. Tucker Carlson with one of the most shameless comments of all time, the liberation has, wait. From the, in the deepest and truest sense. And the liberation he has brought to us is the liberation from the obligation to tell lies. Donald Trump has made it possible for the rest of us to tell the truth about the world around us.
Oh, this is about him being racist. Like he's saying, you know, the dog whistles are off so we can just be honest. He's not wrong. I mean, Donald Trump did. Donald Trump did unshackle the unrestricted racist sentiment, especially towards immigrants. And it comes from the same exact place of, of anti-black white supremacy as well. It's the exact same type of white supremacy. I mean, this entire rally is proof of that. This entire rally has been proof of that exact sentiment. And that's the single most liberating thing you can do for people. If you want to enslave people, if you want to degrade them, force them to tell lies. And they have. They force Yeah, make coffee great again. Trump gold blend on the side. That that's what makes it even funnier. It's just to lie about everything at gunpoint effectively. <clears throat> they put people in prison for refusing to lie. And not just the obvious lies that men can become women or Vladimir Putin blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. No, honestly, he did. January 6th was an insurrection. They were unarmed, but it was very insurrectiony. Not even the obvious ones, but the big lie. You know what the big lie is? The big lie is that they're impressive. That's not sure if you're going to cover it, but the celebrity endorsements during this rally were unplanned. J-Lo, Ricky Martin, especially, but especially Bad Bunny came out of nowhere and reacted to react this rally. Lopez? Yeah, the Harris campaign was shocked by the Bad Bunny one. The wine mom and Latino mom groups are talking about this. And Ricky Martin, but you know, Ricky Martin, Hassan Abi, uh, head, as you know, endorsed Kamala Harris. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. J-Lo endorsed Trump? No, dude. Oh. Bad Bunny, Ricky Martin, J-Lo endorsed Kamala Harris during this oh. rally. Oh, I thought, I was like, I thought they came out. I was like, J-Lo? Yeah. They brought J-Lo out here? Harris camp are seeing the Puerto Rican stuff break through like nothing in the cycle yet. Yeah, of course, because it was an unrestricted, unhinged okay. act of racism, dude. These guys got way too comfortable in their Twitter bubbles thinking that they could just, once again, do the same thing that they do all the time when they go on debate stages in front of like 50 million people 60 million people and say like Haitians are eating cats and dogs and people go Ugh, what that's kind of weird I keep repeating to you guys I keep repeating to you guys something that you don't trust me on because we watch so much like racist Republican sh every day and I think it breaks our f brains too where we think like everyone thinks like this and I keep trying to explain to you there is a level of permissible bigotry okay you can't go above it when you go above a level of permissible bigotry, when you don't simply point to vague generalizations, systems of oppression that already exist that people take for granted, and you take it one step further and you get like nerdy with it or weird with it, people are going to look at that and go, oh, that's gross, dude. Why the f did you say that? There is a window of permissible misogyny. There's a window of permissible white supremacy. People like Ben Shapiro regularly choose not to go above that because they at least understand that you can't cut commentary that way. Hassan, this man has a 50 chance, 50% 50 chance of being president. Yes, but that doesn't mean every single person that's voting for him is aware of all of this. Sh Next Tuesday, you have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala Harris that you've done a terrible job. We're not going to take it anymore. Kamala, you're fired. We're bringing back Ugh, the American He doesn't even have that juice, dude. Kamala, you're fired. He's trying to hit the, like, this is, this He's is literally. can't even move the bro, arm anymore. Bro, this is Frankie Valley. Oh, yeah. On stage yeah. with the microphone. He's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah. like mouthing He's the words. He's his rallies. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Kamala, you are fired. Uh. Like, come on, dude. You fell off big dog no juice no but he when i say he's lost <coughs> he's lost the sauce he's lost the juice but even that like we're gonna say kamala you're fired like we get it man that's your that's your line like yeah. we get it you're trying to do your hits and it's just like it sucks dream and it doesn't hit bring the same. it back at the highest level that you've ever seen we're seeing historic levels of support among our black population, Hispanic population, and our Asian population. I've got a hot take. So Jews and Muslims. I wouldn't Let's be surprised hear. when the exit polls show up that Kamala didn't really lose that much support amongst that community. Yeah, that's most likely what's going to happen. Like, yes, it, it's kind of it, it's, it's, it's not going to be twenty percent. It's not going to be twenty percent. It's the same. It's the same idea that the Democrat. It's the it's the liberal version of like a bunch of Republicans are going to vote for. Kamala Harris, right? Remember how a bunch of Democrats are like, oh, you're not counting all the Republicans that are going to vote for him. Yeah. No, no, they're not, not. going to vote. Yeah. For, they're all going to vote for him. You know what I mean? It's like that yeah. version. No, you're absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, think you're right on that. I, I think I think you're yeah. right. Like, I, I don't think like he she may lose a percentage or two, but I don't think it's going to be 20 fucking percent. That's insane. Yeah, no.
No shot. And I, I, I'll even go start. I'll even come up with a hotter take. What she loses in black men, she'll make up in black women in turnout. Maybe. I, I do think that the hyper focus on black men from liberals, too, is just like not only annoying, but also stupid when white men who are also non college educated are going by massive percentages of Donald Trump. And have always gone by massive percentages of Donald Trump. Like a marginal shift in the other direction for black men without a college degree is, is so inconsequential. And it really frustrates me that this is like a major point of contention. And they're really doing a job and we're going to turn this country around. You know, with me, we got to get the congressman elected and we got to get the senators elected because we can take the Senate pretty easily. And I think with our little secret, we're going to do really well with the House, right? Our little secret is having a big impact. He and I have a secret. What the what f does that mean? What does that mean? What is, mean? What, is what is he spelling? Trump hinting at a secret while, uh, with Mike Johnson to be revealed post-election. Clearest indication yet that if Trump loses, the plan is to sow enough doubt about election results in key states that the House can declare a contingent election and proclaim Trump the victor. Is that even possible? Anything is possible, baby. Anything is possible. That's why I'm saying like, like, I don't think, I don't think there's a January 6th style situation likely, but like, I feel like that's not going to stop them from trying. Well, hell no. How, so the house would have to vote on a contingent election and then they would get supported by the Supreme court. I think this was the Mike Johnson. And if so, he's signaling that Republicans will try to do the thing that keeps me up at night. Screw around with the electoral college vote. So that the house itself votes on the president instead. Each state gets one vote. Trump wins with 26. This is known as the contingent election of the president and was, although many people still don't fully realize it, part of the goal behind January 6th. This scenario depends on a few things, but most uh, especially on who controls the House. So if you're freaked out about this possibility, visit Go Kamala Harris and volunteer to help them elect Dems. A close election in a Republican-controlled House f***ing around with electoral college votes. All they need is enough chaos to kick the vote for the presidency of the House itself. This procedure is known as a contingent election of the president and was one of the hosts behind January 6th. If that happens, each del state delegation in the House gets one vote for president, and the 26 states almost certain to have majority GOP delegations vote Trump in as president against both the popular vote and the electoral college vote. They have the Supreme Court locked down as well, so it's not like you can take it up there and defend it. I know many of them. It's just this amorphous group of people, but they're smart and they're vicious. Trump, we need to defeat our opponents. They're the enemy within. Supporters, he means illegal immigration and woke stuff. Trump, I want to be clear that Democrats, former staff, the media, and half of America are enemies we must put down. Supporters, <laughs> he so means true. taxes. I know many of them. It's just this amorphous group of people. But they're smart and they're vicious. And we have to defeat them. And when I say the enemy from within, the other side goes crazy. Becomes a sound of, oh, how can he say... No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. And, <laughs> but this is who we're fighting. He's like, I mean, Nancy Pelosi. They try to correct me. He's like, I mean, Nancy Pelosi. We must use the military on Nancy Pelosi. We must use the military on Adam. Sh <laughs> I'm a fascist. I love Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. And then J.D. Vance is like, uh, actually, when he said he loves Adolf Hitler, he was actually talking about a different Adolf Hitler.